Yo guys and welcome to another video. We're going to start a new project car guys today. It's a Mark II Golf 1.8 turbo street legal track day car. Uh, the engine is already mounted. Um, the rest, yeah, there's nothing done on this car. It's a complete empty shell. Uh, it has a roll cage, complete roll cage. And I already did some work on the on the other side of the car. I had some welding to do and sprayed the bodysuit. Um, but today we're going to start on the complete undercarriage of the car. So I have everything already in the shelves. Uh, big brakes, 223 millimeters uh, discs, brake discs, Brembo calibers, uh, Uniball swing arms. I think it's called a swing arm, but I'm not sure. You guys know what I mean. Uh, hoses, yeah, we have already everything laying ready to mount on the car. And I also did lots of work already on the GLI. Um, I have to change the timing belt because of the water damage, of course. I don't trust all the tensioners and the bearings uh, of, the, of the belt. So I have to, I think I'm going to switch it out tomorrow. And we have new wheels, new wheels mounted. Uh, Porsche C2, fully polished, very, very nice rims. <laughs> Are like mirrors, man. Uh, it's 7G on the front and 8G on the rear. It's, yeah, it's a perfect fit with, combined with the air ride. Um, and another car, we have Wait, <laughs> we have also a Mark 1. We bought a Mark 1. It's going to be the car for my father. Uh, 1.5 automatic, four door GL. Uh, the previous owner had this car for around 15 years. They did a complete restoration. It's for 90% finished. Yeah, it's going to be a very nice car for my father. <laughs> Um, Frank is also in the shop, he's going to help me out today with the um, track day car. And talk about Frank, he's the guy with the yellow Mark III VR6 that was with me uh, in uh, Austin. And he bought a Mark II, <laughs> another Mark II guys. He bought a Mark II and I sold him a PD engine. Uh, we go to completely rebuild this engine, a similar setup as the Corrado, so around 400 horsepower, uh, street legal drag race car. So, yeah, we have enough to do. <laughs> um, I also told you guys in my previous video that the Mark I was coming back from the painter. Um, I had it in the shop, it had some uh, faults in the paint. We are not that happy about it, um, so we brought the car back to the painter. He brought the car uh, to another painter. Uh, I don't know the guy, but yeah, he's going to uh, fix the paint problems. I think it's going to be repainted um, Monday, next week on Monday. Um, so the car will be back in the shop very soon with the VR6 for the VR6 swap. Um, so yeah guys, we're going to start today on the undercarriage of the car, we're going to, I think we're going to put first the PU rubbers, the PU rubbers in the rear axle, and then uh, work our way to the front of the car, and maybe if we have enough time we can make a beginning on the engine bay. So yeah guys, it's going to be a busy day, no time to waste, let's start on our new project. Let's go guys.
guys, so that was much easier than I, than I thought it would uh, go. That's always nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So guys, the new bushings, the PU bushings are already mounted. Um, we also have a brand new uh, coil over kit from VMAX, it's also in stiffness adjustable. Um, so yeah, we can now move the car up, uh, up on the lift and mount the rear axle combined with the new coilovers. So yes, let's move the car up the lift. <laughs> Guys, brand new set from VMAX. Yeah, man. It's a very affordable set, also. It's like 550 euros for a brand new set. And what, of course, the most important, but these are the fronts. They are adjustable. Of course, coilovers are adjustable, but they are adjustable in stiffness. So, yeah, it's a very, very nice set, especially for the price, of course. Nice VMAX set, PU rubbers, very nice. Also, the complete undercarriage of the car new in the bodysuit so guys the axle is mounted uh, we also painted the dust shields and the coilovers are mounted on the axle so uh, we are now going to install the brake discs and the rear calibers we have brand new coated uh, yeah, restored calibers it's nice the same color as the the four piston Brembo front brakes. Um, yeah. It's all getting together now. Also, Danelle is saying hello. Hi. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, let's go further, man. So, the rear brakes are now already installed. Um, we are going to move now to the front of the car. So like I said, I have the Uniball uh, rear or front control arms, swing arms. Um, yeah, these arms, like you see here, they don't have any rubbers. And also you can adjust your camber and, I don't know how to say it in English, caster? Caster. <laughs> So it's a direct fit um, and we also have the adapters for the Brembo brakes. Yeah, let's hope that everything will fit on our first try because normally yeah, if you're going to mount aftermarket stuff or parts that are not original from Mark II, yeah, it can be a headache guys. But yeah, so the front swing arm, control arm, I think it's a control arm. The control arm, we're going to switch it out for the Uniball uh, control arm and mount the, the coilover. I'm going to mount the coilover uh, just with the original uh, top mounts, but I'm going to switch it out on Monday because then I will have the camber plates for the top mount of the coilovers. 
But yeah, we're going to work with the stuff that I have right now. I want to have the undercarriage of the car as close as finished today. So yeah man, let's move back to the front. Okay guys, so we are going to mount the four piston Brembo brakes, um, but the original adapters, they have to be shimmed out. So I have some different shims uh, that I'm going to use. <coughs> and if I am happy with the final position, then we're going to mount the brake pads. And yeah, man, this is, this is a very aggressive look, man. Very big brakes for a Mark II Golf. Uh, so, yeah, let's. Oh, easy. <laughs> easy does it. Um, I think I'm going to start with two shim plates of one millimeter each. No, it's not one millimeter, it's three. No, it's not three, right? I don't know exactly, but I measured it before I. Wanted to mount the the brakes, so I'm going to start with two shims. It's very close guys, but it fits. I'm going to call the owner of the car now. I'm sure he's going to be also very excited. Hey Matt. It passed egg netto, eh? What? <laughs> so guys, um, I'm very happy with the result because at first I thought it was uh, more difficult. I, th I thought it was going to be more difficult to shim the, the brake caliber on its right position. And when it was finally mounted, I really thought that we had a problem with mounting the wheels, but it's completely rotating freely. Yeah, man, it's, it's perfect. I have like one millimeter, I think I can go, yes. I have like one millimeter of space. Yeah, you see it here. Yeah, it is, it's perfect. It's perfect. I really like the look of the brakes and the Sparco wheels because the owner wants to build this car in, with like the Sparco team. Sparco steering wheel, Sparco seats, um, the roll cage is going to be Sparco blue. Um, that's also the reason why we going to use the blue hoses. Yeah, it's. I like the I like how far we came today. We are not finished. <laughs> We're still going to work further, but yeah man. To see an empty shell and now with wheels and the big brakes. 
Yeah, man. I like it a lot. Give me a comment in the section below if you like the big brake setup. In the rear, we used the original brakes, um, but at least they are like bored, so it looks a little bit more racy. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, let's go back further on the other side, but I'm not going to show you guys everything, every step of uh, doing double work on the left and the right side. So I'm going to finish up the braking system. Afterwards, I'm going to make the brake lines and everything. Um, and also the, the uniball, the uniball swing arms. Yeah, they fit perfect. It's perfectly like this. Yeah, man. The handling and the steering of this car is going to be so direct, you know, With, without all the um, movements of the original rubbers. Because if you compare it with like an original control arm, you have the openings, the openings on the on the sides. These rubbers are like, yeah, not stiff at all. They have lots of movement. So for a track car. This will be a very good solution. Also on the road it's possible, but yeah, it, you will lose, you will lose uh, some part of the comfort of the car, of course. But yeah, for this, for the purpose of this car is the best way to go. So <laughs> yeah, man, let's go further, man. So guys, the brake setup is mounted. It looks very nice combined with the Sparco wheels and it fits perfectly. Also the uniballs, uh, both sides of the brake calibers, the rear and the front are mounted. Um, so yeah, tomorrow I'm going to start on the engine bay because I want to wait with making the brake lines um, because I ordered the uh, Goodrich uh, brake hoses so when I have them uh, received here in the shop when I received the hoses in the shop I'm going to make the brake lines and then the complete undercarriage of the car will be finished so tomorrow I'm going to start on the engine bay like uh, yeah finishing up the timing belt uh, alternator hoses and everything so yeah I cleaned everything up this will be enough for today. Frank already headed back home. I'm very tired. So I see you guys tomorrow. Bye. So guys, today we are back in the shop. My father is here, Alex, Bart, and also the owner of the Mark II uh, track car. He brought a lot of extra stuff, guys. I don't know if I have space for it, but um, I don't, I don't even know what he all, what he what he brought with him. But have you uh, <laughs> have you already showed the fitment of the wheels? Yeah, uh, I showed it yesterday, yeah. but it's it's. Look at yeah, this, guys. Man. Can you see from yeah, above? It's, it's very close. It's not rubbing, but, it, but it's enough. It looks so awesome. <laughs> so today I'm going to start on the engine bay, uh, all the hoses. I'm going to check the timing belt and. Also, I have to change the, the brake booster and the master cylinder because the previous owner uh, mounted, I think it's from a Mark IV because there are only two, um, yeah, there are only two openings for brake lines and originally they will go to the ABS module. The ABS uh, pump. So I'm going to switch it out for a 9 inch GTI booster and an original Mark II uh, master cylinder. And then we can start with uh, yeah, making the brake lines. So, yeah, man. So, look, what did you bring with you, man? Uh, everything. <laughs> a lot of stuff in the car. Trailer. Okay, it's a small trailer, but <laughs> <laughs> he's happy that all his crap in his uh, in the shop he can throw it all here. Santa's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just kijken. Uh.
Oh, oh, oh. Ja, nee, dat weet ik. Waarom twee? Oh, deze is zelfs gespoten, joh. Deze is gelakt. But I don't think we're going to use uh, engine cover. Dashboards, bumpers, bumpers. small, small bumpers. <laughs> He brought only crap with him, man. Okay, we have power steering lines complete, like I see it here. So that's very nice. Also, another power steering housing. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, man. But uh, look, I don't think we are going to use the engine covers, right? Yes, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think is. Oh, nice. Sparco center caps. That's ah, too big, man. <laughs> it's too big. I don't like the the look with the cover, but. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah, it was what made leak. Yeah. Yeah, it come. Oh. So guys, I want to make a beginning on the engine bay. Um, the engine bay at this moment, it's just the engine is mounted. Nothing is connected. So no wiring, no coolant hoses, no exhaust, no nothing. Um, I only mounted the, the axles when I fixed the undercarriage of the car. Um, so I want to start with changing the brake booster and the master cylinder. I'm going to take off the coolant reservoir um, yeah, so I can finish up the braking system. Afterwards I'm going to start on the wiring of the car and or maybe I'm going to start first on the Coolant hoses, intercooler piping, we will see. But there is enough to do on the engine bay. And I also, it's going to be a track day car, but I really want to make this car also clean and, yeah, very nice uh, looks of the engine bay, of course, because I, I have a thing with engine bays. <laughs> In my opinion, an engine bay is has to be looking good, <laughs> especially when I build it. So um, I'm going to make it a clean engine bay. The battery is going in the, inside the car. The window wiper fluid tank is going to be located inside the car. Uh, so the rest will be only the coolant reservoir, intercooler piping, and the rest will be shaved. Um, yeah, we're going to start with ripping out the brake booster and we will see what, <laughs> what will happen next. So, if you guys, I want to give you guys a quick close up on the engine bay. So, the previous owner already rebuilt the engine, but it was like a stranded project. So, it was just an empty shell with a roll cage and an engine. The undercarriage was nothing done. Uh, also, the uh, power steering housing, or I don't know if I pronounce it right, but like it has power steering. The st steering column, or I don't know. It has power steering, but it doesn't have the lines. So, uh, Luke, the owner of the car, he brought uh, a complete power steering system where I can use the hoses. And I think I'm also not going to use this reservoir because they are ugly and I don't like the narrow location combining with a 0 to A or a 0 to M or 0 to G gearbox. So I'm going to make a similar uh, setup of the power steering with the 
reservoir from a Corrado and also the Mark II G60s uh, will have that uh, reservoir originally. So that's the plan for today. Um, ripping out the Ray Booster and yeah, <laughs> let's see what we will do next. So going to make a quick time lapse. Let's go, guys. brake booster mounted on the adapter plate. I have all the space in the engine bay to first mount the power steering lines. So that's what I'm going to do first and then mount the brake booster back. So yeah man. So the power steering hoses are both connected and now you see what I meant with the bracket for the older type um, power steering reservoir. Now, it is possible to move it a little or uh, shorten it a little, but you see that it's very close to the gearbox. So I want to rip this bracket off and make it like the G60, like the GLI on this position. Much, much better. So, yeah man. We are getting closer. So guys, I took the complete front of the car because I don't like this radiator. Uh, the radiator that they used has both of the connectors for the coolant hoses on the driver's side. And I want to mount them on the passenger side. Like if you see this, they used a very long coolant hose. Also very narrow to the engine mount and I don't like it. Um, so I'm going to switch this radiator out. I already have another one, a new one in the shelf. So I'm going to switch the radiator and afterwards I'm going to make the silicone coolant hoses. I'm going to take this bracket off because we're also not going to use this bracket. Um, so yeah, this is very... I, I don't do this. I don't prefer... I do not prefer such a long coolant hose especially not in the yeah so close to the front engine mount so yeah man so i already mounted the alternator and the, the new radiator is finished but i'm missing a lot of stuff on this engine i search in the boxes and there is a lot of stuff missing on this engine so i have Two Audi TTs, they are from a friend of mine, um, and they are both demolition cars. So I'm going to take out the engine from this Audi TT. It still has the complete 1.8 turbo engine. Um, yeah, it's much easier to rip out the whole engine and take off the parts that I need for the track day golf. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. Rip out the engine real quick. Put it besides the track day golf and take off all the stuff that I need for that engine. Um, so yeah, <laughs> let's rip out this engine real quick guys. <laughs> So I took the engine from the Audi TT, so I finally have all my spare parts to mount on the Mark II engine. Um, there is still lots to be done, but I think within, I think the, at the end of this week, I want to make the first start of the engine. So yeah, there is enough to do, but <laughs> that will be for another video. So if you don't want to miss out on this build, keep an eye out on my channel. 
And the Mark II GLI, I have an appointment at the RDW for technical inspection because of the water damage. Um, I'm going to uh, pick up uh, two rare, two other rare doors for the for this car because I showed it in my previous video when they pulled the car out of the water, they damaged both rear doors. So I have to change them out. Um, I also want to change the timing belt and move the front, mount the front back on the car. And uh, the airlift, I have to switch the airlift uh, to a coilover set. And originally this car has, uh, ha has a co catalytic converter. So I have a 200 cells catalytic converter right here that I'm going to mount just for the technical inspection. Um, so that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. I think I'm also going to film uh, the work that I will be doing on the GLI and at the ATW. So yeah, I'm going to try to upload one video a week for you guys um, and the mark one uh, is uh, painted today so within a week also the mark one will come back in the shop so <laughs> a lot of cars a lot of new projects yeah man i'm excited i really want to thank you guys for watching feel free to subscribe spam that like button if you like my video and i see you guys in the next one ciao Thank you.